coming up on Greater Life Today with Pastor Netha D. Bell. Today's message is entitled, God is Working in Your Waiting. Grab your pen, your paper, and your Bible, for our focus scripture comes out of the book of Acts, chapter 1, 4 through 11. Let's go into the sanctuary of the Greater Life Christian Center Church. There is actually something happening while nothing thing is happening if I could speak past your mind and just literally speak into your heart in the name of Jesus I come with the message from heaven above that God is saying I'm working in your waiting God is using the waiting to change some things unfortunately life requires a lot of waiting and this is something that some of us find not to have joy in but the truth is life requires waiting either you're waiting for your healing you're waiting for a marriage or a relationship to be restored somebody is waiting for a husband or a child or an answer or a direction or guidance or purpose on this Somebody is waiting for purpose on this morning. Somebody is waiting for just the right confirmation. Somebody is waiting this morning for a financial breakthrough. Somebody on their job is waiting for a promotion. Somebody's waiting for freedom. Somebody, I don't know about you, is waiting for justice. Somebody is waiting for God to make right all the wrong things that have been done. Somebody is waiting for justice and they're not waiting on a lawyer, they're not waiting on an advocate, but somebody is waiting on the Lord to make just on his promise. Somebody's waiting for change or for dreams to be fulfilled or to feel purpose. But let me speak into this house alone. You are not alone in your waiting. Abraham and tonight had to wait for his son. And Jacob Patty had to wait for Rachel. And Joseph had to wait for many things. Jesus had to wait to start his ministry. And he's still waiting to return. And so this morning, through waiting, I have learned there are four things on how we can respond to waiting. Either we can maximize waiting, minimize waiting, advertise our waiting, or analyze our waiting. Jesus, come on, come on, come on and come alive. When in the midst of waiting, tell somebody I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. I'm, waiting. I'm got a quiet peace and I'm trusting. Is there, am I in the wrong, wrong place? Is there anybody that's waiting on something? Jesus have ascended. He's given a structure. He said, go sit right there and wait. I don't know what you're waiting on, but is there a wave, a hand wave? I can't wait. And if you're waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. Am I in the right place? I'm in the right place. I'm waiting, I'm waiting. And so I've learned in in the waiting process, there are four things this morning that we need to be aware of. When we're waiting, we can maximize the time, minimize the time, advertise the time, or analyze our time. We can maximize the time. What do you mean by that, preacher? My waiting time, I maximize it, meaning I can become overburdened by the time that I have to wait. I make it such a burden to me that I'm overstressed that I can't sleep and I stay awake. Waiting looking up to heaven for just the right time. Or I can minimize my waiting time, meaning I understate it and I just lay there lazy, saying I'm waiting on the Lord, Jesus, Jesus. And I minimize the experience. I just sit back and say, I'm just gonna wait on God to make something happen for me while I just sit here and wait. 
The man said, I've been waiting for the angels to come, but every time they come, they skip over somebody, jumps over me, and they get the blessing. He minimized his waiting time and missed his opportunity. Or you can advertise. Have you ever been waiting for something from God and you just advertise? Have you, okay, not you, but have you ever been around somebody that's been waiting on something from God and every conversation you have with them, they remind you that they're waiting for God to heal them. They're waiting for their husband. They're waiting for their financial breakthrough. They didn't call everybody up and every time you see them, they advertise how they are. It's dangerous that you sit around and just constantly, constantly make your waiting process your entire process. And then you make it a process that everybody knows, Jesus, your business. But then I've come to a place of understanding with a silent quietness and trust that you can actually analyze your waiting process. And you can extract some information from your waiting process. Can I tell somebody on this morning that waiting is saturated with information? Oh, my God, oh, my God, I'm by myself this morning. Come on, Holy Ghost, and preach to me. Waiting is an experience that is saturated with information on this morning. See, bad times when you think they are bad and you're waiting is saturated with the knowledge to know this is just the enemy reaction to your progress. Oh my God, it's saturated. You ain't did nothing wrong. Your waiting process is the enemy trying to stick his foot out to trip you and trying to stop your progress. You can get that if you allow yourself to let the Holy Ghost minister to you. But in good times, you can look at your waiting process and know that it's saturated with information because the waiting is God preparing a way. Greater Life Today television broadcast. Set your clocks and your DVRs to tune in to the Greater Life Today television broadcast on Channel 4 WACP on Sunday mornings at 5 a.m. Same channel, new time. We're excited to announce that the Greater Life Today broadcast is moving to 3 a.m. A new time starting Sunday, November the 3rd, 2019. Save the date are invited to the Greater Life Christian Center Church for Sunday morning worship at 11 a.m. We welcome you to join us today. We're located in West Philadelphia at 617 North 41st Street between Lancaster and Caverford Avenue, and we would love to see you and your family. Go back into the sanctuary with Pastor Bell. This week at Bible study, we were in Bible study, and God was speaking about being able to be at a place that you thank him for waiting. You thank him for putting you in a be still place. And I gave an example, if you don't mind helping me out, somebody, somebody know how to make a paper airplane. God gave me a holding pattern example of if you're a frequent flyer, come on, if you were scared, you want and you've flown in a plane, there are sometimes you will arrive to destinations. And you call down to the airport and they say, you can't land yet. It comes seasons where there is a holding pattern and the plane, the plane being you, gets to Jerusalem, the place God told you to be, and you're in a holding pattern. Why? Because unfavorable conditions are on the ground. Come on, you got it? There you go. That looked like, okay. <laughs> Ow, that was your wife in the name of Jesus. That put, wait, if y'all just give me one second. Victoria called me a perfectionist, but this, this ain't going to um, pretty much do any. Thing if I just maybe straighten out the back part. I know I ain't been in school in a long time, but I do remember it looking something like this with some wings. 
Just something like this. I don't know what this part is right here, but God has uniquely created each and every one of us that we don't look like the other planes that are in the air. In the name of Jesus, I might have had a rough past in the name of Jesus, but yet and still, I'm still in the air. And we get to the airport of our destination. You're right there in life close enough that you can look down and see it. And then all of a sudden, the pilot calls down and says, they have arrived. Jesus, come on and get this word. Come on and get this word. You've been through the storm and you arrived. And I know I've arrived because I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. I can see the flashlight saying it's time for this thing to get ready to come to an end. But all of a sudden, there is a report from the ground that says the conditions down here are not favorable for landing. And so the pilot announces to you, you and I, listen, we got to maintain a holding pattern pending notice that it is our time. I heard it said that this happens regularly. But one of the things that has to happen with the plane is that in the midst of this, the plane has to have enough fuel. to be able to sustain itself. Oh my God, you better check your gauges. You better check your gauges because you got to have enough fuel that if God says, yes, you have arrived, you made it to Jerusalem, but I don't want you to land just yet because the Holy Ghost huh, ain't made it just yet. The demons got him on lock, but he's coming and he's going to dry up every foul thing so that when you land, there is no turbulence. And so it's not enough just to have staying power to stay in the air so that you can land carefully. But you got to have enough spiritual staying power to be able to stay until the call comes that the ground is clear. The call don't come from you. The call don't come from your neighbor. That is only spoken by heaven. It says, wait on the Lord and be strong. Let your heart take courage to stay airborne until it comes time for the storm to pass. That is why you need enough spiritual fuel. Somebody said, well, what if we can get another plane to come up and give us gas? God says, there is no other planes. You're in the right place at the right time, and now all you have to do is wait for the miracle to open up. Because if you do not wait, you're liable to catch turbulence on coming down. If you do not wait, you're liable to crash with another plan that's landing. Jesus, if you do not wait, there will not be an open space for you, and you'll land right on top of the person that was supposed to move out the way so that you would have a way. God is working in the midst of your waiting. And so my first point on this morning is, here, I'm, I'm, I'm coming to drop some knowledge on you. It's while you're waiting, tell yourself this. Do not give a temporary situation full-time energy. Oh, my God. Don't give that. I'm, my holding pattern, I'm waiting. This is a temporary situation. And so I cannot give temporary situations full-time energy. Remember, seasons change. Attacks don't last forever. People change. Weather changes. Circumstance changes. So don't be discouraged, but expect 
a supernatural, dramatic change. For tomorrow is coming and your future is unlike any yesterday you have ever known. God is working in the midst of your waiting and do not give temporary situations all of your energy. Do not sit explaining temporary situations about your future. Jesus, this is a temporary situation so I don't have to spend telling temporary things about destiny of my future. You got to tell yourself, I cannot give you all of my energy because at a blink of an eye, God will switch this thing, turn it around, and from where I was on the bottom, the first will be the last and the last will be first. This is a temporary situation. For weeping will endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. And so listen to this. You have to pray to see the big picture. You got to pray to see the big picture. What do you mean by that, preacher? Nothing ever seems as bad as it first appears. Pain passes. Adversity passes. You have to look beyond the current, current hardships. Something incredible is being produced in your waiting. See, the resurrection came after the crucifixion my brother and my sister. Promotion follows adversity. Somebody tell your neighbor, get your eyes on the big picture. Because God is working in your waiting. For 2 Corinthians 4, 17 says, for our present troubles are small and won't last long, not long at all. Yet they produce in us a glory that vastly outweighs them and will not that a glory that will last forever. My first point is do not give temporary situations full-time energy. And the second point is you are not a victim of your circumstance. Who am I speaking to in this morning? Somebody is crying like a victim. And God says, just because you're in a holding pattern and you're standing over top of the air base and you see all those other plans, I need you to realize you are not a victim of your circumstance or your situation. So you have to avoid a victim mentality. Any wounded animal is attacked. Weakness is an invitation for bullies. So don't talk nor think like a victim of your circumstances. For you are more than a conqueror, and this too shall pass. So in my analyzing, I tell myself I have to act like and talk like. This is only a temporary situation. For the love of God will keep us in the name of Jesus. You got to tell yourself, I am not a victim. Somebody said, why this happened to me? I'm going through this and I'm going through that. That's a victim. Jesus. That's a victim. When, when is my time going to come? What day? That's a victim. God says, you're not in no victim. I positioned you right where I want you to be. Don't run. Don't go back into the past. You are exactly the where you are supposed to be. You are not a victim. This is not the devil's doing. In the name of Jesus, pat yourself and say, I am not a victim. God has a plan. And he is working in my way. Hello, this is Pastor Bell, and I want to invite you to join us on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. for our one hour of power Bible study. This is not your traditional Bible study. This is a time where real people gather together with real talk around God's words to find real answers to life. You don't want to miss this powerful time with iron sharpening iron. See you soon back into the sanctuary of the Greater Life Christian Center Church. Jesus. He's working in my waiting. Romans 8.35 says, can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble, calamity, 
and persecution, hunger, destitute, or danger, or threatened for, with death. Does that mean he doesn't love us? Romans 8, 37 sums it up. It says, no, despite all of these things, overwhelming victory is ours in Christ Jesus who loves him. So what are you saying, preacher? You have to expect rescue. You are not a victim. You didn't cause it, but God planned it. Jesus. God planned it. You didn't cause it. You didn't change it. God planned it, and God is completely in control. You are not a victim of circumstances, so you can't pray like a vic- somebody that's being victimized and asking God to come for help. God says, I can position you. You have to quiet your spirit and quietly trust me to stay in line with me. God says, nobody owes you nothing as long as you're still in air. I speak into this situation, anybody that's waiting, and you're in a holding pattern, God says, nobody owes you anything. Somebody says, somebody should bring some gas. God says, nobody owes you anything. I speak into the atmosphere, the whole fact that you're in a holding pattern is that God didn't stop all movement. Jesus, Jesus. Somebody said, where's the other planes that were traveling with me? God says, I have called back all life support. I have put down inside of you everything you need to stay stabilized and stay afloat. There is no rescue coming because you don't need to be rescued because you're not a victim. Somebody said they've flashing from the ground does that mean it's time and the word of God says you don't know the time or the date and that's none of your concern the flashing from the ground is to confirm you're in the right place y'all not seeing it in the spirit I'm up high and somebody is saying I see light And the angel says, no, it's only dangerous when you're up high and can't see light. But when you're up high and you can see light, that is the angel saying, you're closer than you thought. In the name of Jesus, hold tight. Somebody said, here comes the wind. The wind is blowing, but it got to pass too. Somebody, somebody didn't recognize that in there waiting, God is working. Somebody say, God is working in my waiting. And I have to expect rescue. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Adversity is just a page. It is not an entire book. Adversity is simply hell's attempt to abort your next season. That God has already scheduled, God has already scheduled that you would be right where you are. God is already working it on the ground and preparing the way. God knew that it was going to be a holding parent at this time and at this season. He knew it. But he also knew that he put enough fuel inside of you that would sustain you for the right time and the right hour. The eyes of the Lord are upon you in the name of Jesus. And so you have to expect a miracle rescue. My last point is everything happens for God's reasoning. Everything, there is nothing that unfolds that God does not have a reasoning behind it. And because of that understanding, you have to keep a mind and a spirit of a finisher. Keep the spirit of a finisher. What are you talking about, preacher? Anyone can begin a marathon. Anybody can start out flying. But can I tell you, you did not weather all those storms to get to the airport to let a holding parent. You didn't cross more ground to get there. 
And to get there and get that close that you could see it and allow that time of waiting to stop you from your positioning in the name of Jesus. Work your position. Somebody said, but I've lost some baggage along the way. That made your low lighter because God knew that you was going to have to stay up in the air until the ground was right. Somebody said the door opened up. God said I needed them things that was on the inside to come on on the outside so that you would be prepared to land. Somebody said, what about the passengers that's traveling with me? God said, give them something to see. In the they didn't been, oh, Holy Ghost. Somebody said, what about the passengers that's on a plane with me? God said, see, the wonderful thing about the passengers is they got to experience the storms before. They got to see you go through the storm. They got to see you at your lowest point. Why not allow them to see the grand finale? In the name of Jesus, why not also give them a testimony that I may not have experienced it from the front seat, but I was on the back of the plane and I watched them when they went through hell and high water and they held on. I watched them when the bottom fell out. I watched them eat crumbs, but I didn't also watch God part of Red Sea. God is working in your waiting, but your waiting is not just about you. You're waiting so that people are experiencing with you. And so you got to watch your advertisement of your waiting process. Greater Life Today Television Broadcast. Set your clocks and your DVRs to tune in to the Greater Life Today television broadcast on Channel 4 WACP on Sunday mornings at 5 a.m. Same channel, new time. We're excited to announce that the Greater Life Today broadcast is moving to 3 a.m. A new time starting Sunday, November the 3rd, 2019. Save the date message was a blessing to you so much so that you feel led to become a partner with this ministry by sowing a financial seed you can go out to our website thegreaterlifechristiancenter.org or you can use the cash app option we thank you in advance for your support Pastor Bell, and it's about that time for us to get ready to go, but I wanted to personally invite you to join us this Sunday for 11 a.m. worship. It is still early enough for you to get up and get ready to meet me in the sanctuary for the Greater Life Christian Center as a church that you can come as you are because this is a place where strangers become family, family become disciples, and disciples change the world for Christ. We're located in West Philadelphia. 617 North 41st Street between Lancaster and Haverford Avenue and we would love to worship with you. Location. For more information about the ministry, visit our website, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter. And you can even join us on our YouTube channel. Experience the difference at the Greater Life Christian Center Church.